Hello and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fennel Neptune. Today we have with us uh, the mental health psychiatric nurse practitioner, nurse Alicia Segis, who will provide us with information on mental health and mental wellness. Welcome to the program. Mm, thank you for having me. Great. Um, before we get into the discussion as it relates to mental health or wellness, perhaps you could tell us uh, what is mental health or mental wellness? Okay, um, according to WHO, it says that mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to their community. So mental health is where you well-being, you have a balance, you're able to function, you're able to relate to others, you're able to work, you're able to help others. So that will be mental health. Okay, and why is it important um, for a person to actually maintain the mental health or the wellness? Okay, you can't say you can't say that you're completely healthy if you don't even not mentally healthy because you need your mind. Your mind helps helps you think, think so you'll be able to make decisions, the correct decisions, the correct choices. You'll be able to um, interact properly, make good, have good relationships, have good relationships. You're able to function well at your job, be productive. You will have um, good self-esteem. It builds up your self-esteem. So in order, if you're mentally healthy, then you will live a more productive and healthy life. Okay, so would you say that um, everyone um, should actually maintain his or her mental health? Yes, we all should, all throughout the lifespan. From infant to adulthood, we should be all work on maintaining our mental health. Okay, and um, what are some of the um, types of situations um, that will actually affect a person's mental health? Well, when you look at mental health, mental health is like a continuum. At one end you have mental health and the other end you have mental illness. So like we go day to day, we go up and down on the continuum. We just want to stay above the midline. So you have mental health at, health at one end and mental illness at the other end. So things that would affect our mental health. If we don't sleep well, we cannot concentrate. If we... Um, extra stress if we highly stressed and we don't relieve our stress if we um sad we're going through a sad we are lost grief loss sadness and we're not able to cope or not able to deal with it um examinations and all of these things will take us a little way down the continuum in the mental in our mental health but most people are able to bounce back that's one thing about mental health you're able to bounce back towards the healthy side of mental health Okay, so you're saying that although somebody might go through a, t a period of time where they might be stressed and their mental health might be affected, there is a possibility that they could get back to their normal self? Yes, there is a possibility. Okay, and um, would you say that anxiety, stress, depression, all of these would contribute, actually contribute to um, somebody's mental health? Yes, anxiety, it is normal. our feelings, anxiety, sadness, depression, all of these would affect our mental health. But the thing with it is that we're able to deal with, this con deal with these situations, these conditions, and able to come back to mental health. Okay, would you say that um, mental health um, problems um, would affect a specific um, gender, or is it something, would you say, yes, that it affects everyone? Is it, does it go with gender, race, education? What does it, if you could explain a little more in depth. Okay, so mental health issues, mental health problems would affect everyone. But there are certain conditions, like they say depression is more prominent in women, mm -hmm. whereas schizophrenia, another mental illness, is more prominent in males. And the age difference, depends on the condition, will differ. So it depends on the mental condition, this, it will differ. Okay. And what are some ways in which um, persons can actually maintain their mental health? Okay, um, maintaining your mental health. First of all, you have to know who you are. Learn yourself, know who you are, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, you, um, take time to relax, some me time, know what gets you angry, what gets you sad, what makes you happy, okay? Um, learn your emotions, so like say, 
if you know that you're going to get very angry, know what situations cause you to be angry and have a means to deal with these situations or deal with your feelings so that you don't go to the extreme where you do something that you may regret later. Also, um, use your words. You should be able to talk, use your words, how you feel, I feel this way or this is affecting me this way. So use your words. Okay, um, healthy body, healthy mind. So you eat well, you exercise, that will help reduce your stress, make you feel good about yourself these ways. Um, make time for friends and for families. Most times we're so busy going about our daily lives. We always have something to do, work, work, and we don't take time for our friends and families. So if something happens, these people supposed to be our support system. If something happens to us, we don't, they are not there because we don't know when last we spoke to Tom or when last we spoke to, to Jill, and we were looking for them to support us. But if we're on our way, we will pull our friends and our families with us. They help us build our foundation with them. If something happens to us, we don't have too far to go because our support system is right there. It's right there to help us. Another thing causes a lot of stress is um, finance. So to avoid that stress, we create a meaningful budget. Sometimes we have needs, we have wants. So we focus on what we need. And then our wants, if we have extra, we do, what, we do our wants. That will help reduce the stress, a lot of stress. Um, build confidence in yourself like who you are we all have our faults we all have our abilities we maintain our abilities and we try to work on our faults well we are due for a break so I would definitely want you to hold on to that thought and we'll continue our discussion okay thank you we'll be back in a moment coronavirus I am worried Gasa it's only old people dying from that hold up being young does not mean being safe Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with nurse Alicia Segis on mental health or mental wellness. Before we took the break, you were discussing in terms of ways persons can actually uh, maintain their mental health. If you can continue this discussion. Okay, um, when we left, we were looking at um, building your confidence. So we have to realize that we cannot do everything. And what we can do, we do the best that we can do. Okay, we work on that one. Um, you learn to be at peace with yourself. Um, you practice mindfulness. Like they say, stop and smell the roses. When we're doing something, we're so preoccupied, they say multitasking, we don't stop and see exactly what's going on. So one thing, we can stop, round ourselves. Let's look at five things that we have here right now. I can hear the birds, I can see the butterflies. Okay, five things to ground yourself to make sure that you are there, mindfulness. Practice gratitude, be thankful. In spite of the fact that something is wrong, we still have a lot of things that are right. So if every day we can think of five things that we are grateful for that happened to us for the day. We will have a more positive attitude, a more positive outlook. More positive outlook. Like you say, like another one, it comes up against stay connected with others. Call your friend. Call your parents. Stay connected. Stay connected. We are sociable people. We need connection. We need to meet with people. We need to talk. Stay connected. Practice your faith. We all want something to believe in. So whether it is whatever you believe in, you practice your faith. Take time off and practice your faith. A volunteer. Doing things to help others just because you, you can do it gives you a more sense of satisfaction and is, is you do it because it's your work. So take time, volunteer, help others. Help others around us when we're able to. And um, lastly, ask for help. We, at some time in life, we all need help. And we should be able to ask for help. So these are some of the tips if we practice will keep us on the way to keeping us mentally healthy. Wonderful. So we can definitely see for somebody who wants to maintain their mental health, that's a lot of them 
doing the work with themselves, doing getting involved in different activities as well. Yes. And you mentioned ask for help, one of the things that you mentioned. But for some persons, they might feel that, okay, we've done all of those um, different things in terms of the exercise and getting involved in certain activities. But they feel that, okay, I need more help. Um, what services um, does the Ministry of Health have available in the various communities? Okay, um, first of all, let me just start off by saying our team in the community. Presently, we have three mental health psychiatric nurse practitioners in the community. We serve the island. We have three community mental health nurses and we have four community mental health aides. That is our team. And we provide clinics. One of them we do, we provide clinics at each of the wellness centers. Okay, anybody can access the services. The services are for free. You call or come in to make an appointment. If it's an emergency and it is required care, the nurse at the facility will find one of us and we'll get in contact with you. Okay, you don't need to be diagnosed with a mental illness or be a known client of the wellness center. You can come for help. Help is available. Like I say, at each health center, including Denry Hospital and Super Hospital, there's a clinic at least once for the month. Some places there's clinic twice for the month, but most places it's once for the month. These are the, the clinics, okay. And the services we provide, like I said, we have mental health clinics. Um, we have medication management, like persons who are on medication, persons who left the wellness center on medication. We assist with maintenance of the medication, we administer the medication. We do psychoeducation, we educate on the different conditions. We do health promotion, where we talk about the different medical, mental conditions and how to maintain your mental health. We do community outreach, we do school outreach. So if you need us to come to talk to you, talk to your workplace, talk to your employees, you just call and make, make a date and we come to give the lectures. We also do assessment of the pregnant family where we do we look at the coping of the pregnancy the coping after the pregnancy so we can alleviate any problems later we do counseling we do home visits for persons who cannot come in we go to do we go to do the home we go to do home visits we do institution visits like with cornerstone st lucy's home comfort bay we do these visits we do um, also street visits. So some of the communities and nurses go out on the streets to the people to give them the medication and to do checkup. Um, referrals, we, if we, the situation we cannot handle and we need more, we refer, like we refer to the mental, the wellness center. If you need to refer to the private um, psychiatrist, if you need to refer to social services, to welfare, depending on the problem, because the whole thing will not be mentally ill, mental alone. They will have other issues that contribute, other social issues that contribute. So we do the necessary referrals. We also do assessment, initial assessment. If somebody is querying, maybe something is wrong, they can come in and we'll do initial assessment. We also do ongoing assessments of known clients who has been discharged from the hospital. We do that also. So these are some of the services that we offer. Great. I can definitely see that there are a lot of services available for our mental health awareness. Yes, Thank they you are. so much. Well, it was definitely a pleasure having you on the program today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Well, that's how we come to the end of Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fernal Neptune. On behalf of the entire production team, thanks for watching. Until next time. <laughs>